I'm back today with my Land Rover Discovery XD. In previous videos, we found out that this thing is perfectly at home off-road, but I need to start setting it up so that I can take it on adventures. As it is, the Discovery works great as a shelter. If I don't want to, I don't need to take a tent, but there is one item that makes any road trip or adventure better, and that's having a built-in fridge. On my trip to Big Bend National Park with the Defender, I did have a fridge in the back of that, but it's a very small fridge, and these Discoveries have much more room in the back. This fridge won't even fit in the back of the Defender, and this one fits back here, even inside of its box. So let's get it out and take a look at it. I have the fridge unboxed, and it looks like it's the perfect size to fit back here. This is from Bouge RV. This is the Rocky 50. It is a metal cased fridge. I did look at these fridges when I was selecting a fridge for the Defender, but I didn't go with this brand because it didn't have a size that fit well back there. I have shown other projects from Bouge before. Uh, a lot of the solar equipment that I use for installing solar on the top of the 6x6, as well as my Bluebird Wander Lodge, those also came from Bouge. Unfortunately, the Land Rover Discovery does not have a power port back here in the back. This is a Series 1 Discovery, so it does not have power back here. The Series 2 Discos do have power in the back. So before we can power this up, I'm going to need to run an extension cord from up front back here. This is a NOCO 12 foot 12 volt extension. I just get these on Amazon. We just plug one end of this into the 12 volt outlet. You can see the LED did not come on. The ignition will need to be on for this cord to have power. So the fridge will only have power being supplied from the car while the vehicle is running. In the accessory box, the fridge came with two different cords. One that you can plug into the wall and it has a power brick. The other is the 12 volt cord. I'm a little torn on what I think about this being external i guess it's good because not having this built into the fridge means that the fridge is lighter weight but if i wanted to carry this around just in case uh i'd have to find some place to store this big brick let's plug the fridge into 12 volt it looks like the cable that did come with the fridge is probably long enough to actually reach up to the front so that's good but i already ran my extension back here so I'll plug it into that. This is nice. This says that this is 12 volt or 24 volt. That means I could take this fridge and put it into my army trucks, which run on 24 volt. And I can still use the same outlet and power the fridge off of that. There is also a connector here for solar panels. All right, let's turn it on. So this does have dual level. We can set different temperatures for different regions in the fridge. So the whole thing can be a freezer, the whole thing can be a fridge, or you can have fridge and freezer. And look at that, there's two USB-A ports on the bottom there. That's pretty nice. Looks like we can switch between Eco and Max refrigeration levels. I'm going to go grab a Jackery unit so we can see how much that affects the power draw. I have the cord routed back so we can plug it into the Jackery. And on the display there, we'll be able to see how much power this fridge is using. You can see, even with it off, it's using one watt of power. I'm assuming that's because the LED lights are on. So just having the door open with the LED lights on draws one watt. Let's take it out, get the door shut. All right, door is shut, unit is still on, and it's still drawing one watt of power. So you would not want to leave this plugged in when you're not using it because it will drain your battery over time. Let's turn it on. I'm going to change it to eco mode. We're drawing three watts in eco mode. Compressor just kicked on. It's drawing 16 watts now. 35 watts. 42 watts. Okay, looks like it is evening out about 40 watts with the compressor running. This, of course, is when it's bringing it down to temperature. Once it's at temperature, it will take a lot less power. Let's change it to max and see how that affects it. Let's 
it's not really affecting it much. So while the compressor is running and it's coming down to temperature, it looks like eco and max mode do not matter. I'm going to turn this off for a second because this does have another neat feature that my other fridge does not have. We open this door right here. Right here is a battery port and we can plug a battery into here, which will give us about two to three hours of runtime when the car is not supplying power to it. I have one of those batteries right here. Right now, looks like it is discharged, so I'm going to pop it in. Let that charge up. You can see on the display here that it is charging my battery. Charging the battery looks like it takes 26 watts to do that. 26 watts might sound like a lot, but at 12 volt, that's only just over 2 amps. I'm going to turn the fridge back on, let the temperature inside the fridge equalize, and we'll let the battery charge up. Then we'll come back and do some more testing. While I'm waiting for the fridge to equalize, I decided to take the manual out and actually read it. Found out a few interesting things. The first thing I noticed is that this is only saying that right now the input is 10.8 volts and I have it plugged into the wall outlet right now. That means this thing's not actually outputting 12 volts. I just found that a little interesting. And then while looking in the manual, I found out that this door on top can be reversed which is really cool. So you can have it open this way or you can take it off and have it open the other direction. Here's a neat feature that I just discovered. The center divider is removable on this fridge. That turns the fridge into one giant compartment. Of course, you would want your temperature set the same on both zones if you're doing that, or you can have that slid in and have the zones be different temperatures. Pretty neat, I wasn't expecting that. All right, here's something really cool. So right now it's displaying two zones. I have the divider in there, so each zone has a different temperature. But if I pull out the divider, look, it automatically goes to one zone. It knows somehow if the divider is in there or not. So if I slide the divider back in, automatically displays two zones again. That is really cool. I've been playing around with the fridge while I'm waiting for the temperatures to equalize. And now I've connected up the Bluetooth app. This is really, really nice. You can set your temperatures left and right here. You can lock the front panel. That way, if someone accidentally hits any of the controls, they won't be able to change it. You can engage eco mode or max mode. And down here, low, medium, and high battery, that is when the fridge will turn off when your vehicle battery gets to certain voltages. And we do have to refer to the manual to find out what that means. So this is a 12 volt vehicle at high. The fridge will turn off at 11.1 volts. Medium, it will turn off at 10.1 volts. And at low, it'll turn off at nine volts. I could set it to low on this vehicle because I do have dual batteries. So even if this draws the battery down to nine volts, as long as I have enough voltage to click on my solenoid for my second battery, I can still start the engine and I'll be just fine. So the fridge is cooled down. The compressor is not running right now, but the battery is still charging. So the battery is taking 27 watts away to charge it. I'm going to unplug it real quick. Now we are no longer charging the battery and we're only taking the one watt. So while the compressor is not running, the fridge is virtually taking no power. Let's find out what happens if I turn the fridge off. Okay, the fridge is off. Can I turn it on with the app? Looks like the answer is yes. You can turn it on with the app. So that's probably why it's drawing one amp, even when it was completely off before, because it is running Bluetooth looking for a phone so you can control it. So from the driver's seat, I have total control over this fridge. I can see what's going on. If I think that maybe I forgot to turn it on or I wanted to change the temperature, I don't have to pull over on the side of the road to do so. Right now the fridge is set to max. I imagine if we set it to eco, it's not going to change anything because the compressor is not running. In the manual, it was saying the difference between eco and max mode, it should draw about the 45 watts when it's in eco mode and 65 watts when it's in max mode. But as you can see, I did not experience that. Maybe that's on a really hot day that it will do that. 
but in my experience, it was only draw in the 45 watts. I am really impressed with this fridge so far. We'll have to see how it does out in the field, but as it sits right now, I would definitely get another one of these. If you have any experience with these Bouge RV refrigerators, go ahead and leave your experience down in the comments below. And of course, with my vehicle turned off like it is right now, there will be no power coming into the fridge, so it will be running off the battery, which you can just disconnect, take it outside of the vehicle, put it on a picnic bench, put it on the grass, and you will be able to enjoy up to four hours of runtime, even with it not connected to power.